Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace and blessings be upon all of you. Juma Mubarak to you all on this blessed day in Ramadan. Bismillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmaduhu and Astainahu and Astaghfiruhu. On Audu Billah, in Shururi and Fusina, Min Sayat Yamalina. May Yad Hilla, who fell a mudilla, or may you lil who fell a hadilla. Washadula, Ilaha illallah, Wahdahula, Shrikala. Washadu Anna Muhammadan, Abduhu or Sulu. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that uh, the, the Prophet Muhammad uh, is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun O ye who believe be mindful of Allah be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim Ba'd Again, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and Ramadan Mubarak uh, to each of you uh, and to your families. I pray that this month and this time and this Juma, uh, all of which uh, find you and your loved ones in the best of spirits and the best of health. And may this be a uh, point in Ramadan that has been a fulfilling uh, and substantive space to be in, inshallah, that you are well. So we are as hard as it is to believe we're over you know now a third of the way through uh, Ramadan and you know just thinking about how we're going through this month, you know, it may, we may be in uh, one space where some of us may have uh, the blessing of just being able to take in all of this month in, in stride and in community and with the full of fullness of life and the fullness of spirituality and faith uh, and all of its meaning and connection. And maybe having been able to enjoy this space into this time and being able to come to uh, this next third of Ramadan feeling really substantive, feeling really uh, wholesome, feeling, you know, really well connected and whatnot. Um, and also there may be those of us who have gone through Ramadan so far, and we're just feeling like we just kind of maybe tripped after a first day or first couple of days, and we're just kind of snowballing down the hill and just trying to find our uh, pace, just trying to get back into a rhythm and may genuinely be struggling. Um, and, you know, I think we have to acknowledge the space with respect to Ramadan being a time that from its own root, from the root of its word is a time of burning. It's a time uh, of, of trial. It's a time of, uh, you know, intensity. Um, it's a time uh, and that, that does feel scorching in different ways. And for many of us just thinking about if this is akin to kind of like a marathon, we're not necessarily racing against each other in the sense to try and get to the finish line and get to the first, but just trying to find our rhythm with respect to how we got into the space and how we going, how we're going to keep going forward where we, wherever we might be, but having an honest reflection of thinking about and uh, an honest testimony that Ramadan is experienced very differently for each of us in different ways. And uh, for us to first and foremost, be mindful of ourselves in terms of how we're getting through it, but also being mindful of those who are around us. So thinking about how we are uh, at this juncture now, again, uh, over a third of the way through uh, Ramadan and now going into the next 10 blessed days of Ramadan, we're looking at uh, how we can continue to stay the course. As I mentioned, you know, there may be some of us, many of us in different ways that have been staying that course that, you know, have started Ramadan off on a high note, maybe even before Ramadan, you know, just had things clicking off, but now you're firing on all cylinders, you're doing really well, and, you know, things are just going great, uh, both spiritually, both communally, socially, um, health-wise, everything like that is, uh, you know, going great, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, alhamdulillah, and mashallah, that that, that that continues, that that goes forward in that sense, um, but also recognizing on the other side as well, uh, and everything in between, that the experience can also maybe be for some of us just in, in, in such a struggle in different ways. And so we're just trying to see like, you know, we've been uh, stumbling, just kind of going through this marathon, but, you know, didn't know what we were getting into. Uh, and we're just struggling to maybe get, uh, you know, some direction in a sense, maybe keep slipping, maybe uh, just trying to find some kind of focus and maybe not feeling like we're getting as much out of Ramadan as we might be putting in or as, as we might have hoped for. So inshallah, just to think about for ourselves, wherever we might be at Ramadan, wherever we might be, 
in this marathon, whatever condition we might be in, whether we had never ran a race before, or never we had never gone outside before, whether we are seasoned long distance runners or whatnot, um, the reminders for us are all in a sense still the same in terms of how do we stay the course? How do we be able to continue to complete it? You know, Allah looks at our intentions, Allah looks at our uh, efforts, Allah looks at our hearts. Um, you know, the final product in and of itself uh, is is that which is given and uh, granted by Allah. You know, we ask for Allah to give us the uh, the most optimal end result that is there. But uh, what what Islam and what our Deen teach us and what our Prophet Sallallahu teach us is is really the merit is in the struggle. The merit is in the grind of having to continue to uh, to go forward. So you know, even if you're running this marathon, but you could only run you know, maybe like a, a mile or maybe less than that, but you are determined to finish it and you're determined to do something that uh, you're changing something that you've maybe done before. Um, you're making a positive change. It's about that effort. It's about that intention. And so when we're at this pace, a massive space of wanting to stay the course, want to uh, center ourselves back with uh, one hadith, inshallah, that we'll lift up for uh, our um, purposes today, inshallah, that uh, narrated by uh, Abu Hurairah and Sahih al-Bukhari, that uh, Allah said, um, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that uh, Allah has said that every deed of the son of Adam is for him, um, except for fasting. That fasting, it is for me. It's a hadith, uh, in this part of the hadith, it's hadith Qudsi, um, narrated from uh, the, the uh, from, from Allah's uh, point of view in the sense that uh, it is for me and I will reward it. That fasting is a shield. So when one of you fasts, they may not be uh, obscene or boisterous or loud or inappropriate. If someone insults that person or fights them, let them say, indeed, I am fasting. And by the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, the breath coming from the mouth of a fasting person is more pleasant to Allah than the scent of musk. The fasting person has two moments of relief that they enjoy. When they break their fast, they are joyful. And when they meet their Lord, they are joyful. Uh, that uh, when they meet uh, their Lord, uh, they're joyful for their fasting. And so just wanted to lift up this uh, first part of this hadith, inshallah, of um, fasting being something for Allah. That as we're staying the course, again, we're, wherever it might be, whatever pace you might be running at, I uh, might be getting uh, you know, demotivated. You might be uh, feeling overwhelmed. Uh, you might be feeling like, hey, this is just becoming step and repeat. And I don't know what I'm getting out of it, but hey, I'm just running until I see the end of Ramadan. And uh, this is now just, you know, uh, is, 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 is not feeling maybe as connecting in different ways. Or maybe this is very connecting. Uh, and, you know, just a, a similar reminder for us all. So first and foremost, that fasting as Allah has lifted up is something that uh, is is not necessarily for uh, any other purpose, or it's not for um, any the individual benefit, except that it is for um, me. It is for Allah. It is for Allah. And I will reward it, as Allah says in the Hadith. Uh, and just thinking about the significance of this, that apart from any other things that we can do, that uh, when when you look at the uh, scholarly interpretations of this Hadith, that they talk about how other forms of the uh, faraid or of the um, you know the the uh, compulsory acts of worship that are there uh, fasting is the one that you can't really do openly and, and, and you can do openly you can't really uh, necessarily uh, you know show off that that hey I'm fasting you can maybe just say it in a way but you know when you're you, when you're performing your prayer people will probably see it people can see it there you go to the mosque people will see that you're praying so very outwardly uh, when you give your charity people uh, the person who gets the charity or whatnot, anybody who receives it, they will see it um, when you are, uh, you know, doing any of these other acts of worship, the Hajj, any of these things, people will see it. And so it's a very, uh, there's the outward component there. But with respect to the fasting, you know, when you are fasting, you could break your fast or you could start your fast and then, uh, you know, you go for Fajr at the mosque and then you're at home the whole day. And we don't know, you know, you could be eating at home, you could be, you know, just sitting on your couch enjoying a nice meal and, uh, and whatnot and not having fasting, but then you come back to the mosque uh, for Maghrib time and you break your fast and you're, you're eating with everybody else. And they're like, oh, mashallah, you know, good, uh, you're, you're feeling good that you've completed your fast, but in reality you didn't, uh, that this is one that uh, only Allah knows about, that this is something that is kept with Allah, um, that it's not something that, uh, you know, we, we can outwardly show as much in a sense like, oh, I'm fasting, you maybe just say it, but Allah truly knows that if you have done this or if you've not, if you've not done it. And thinking about what is the significance of this being lifted up, we remember that in the Quran, Allah tells us that, you know, fasting has been prescribed for you as it's been prescribed for those before you. 
so that you may be uh, a people of taqwa. So you may be a people who are God conscious, maybe more aware. And when we think about as we're staying the course, as we continue to fast in Ramadan, as we continue to go through Ramadan, maybe we're not able to fast. Uh, maybe we are, uh, you know, uh, unable to for some medical reason or for another reason. Um, and maybe our role is, is a little bit different. Our form of worship is a little bit different in a sense. But thinking about the intentionality, the mindset of fasting is something that can pervade across the board. It's something that uh, can be uh, taken on by anybody in the sense that you enter this moment, you enter this space as, as fasting is an act of worship, just like the salah is an act of worship. When we show up to our salah, there's certain things that we can do, certain things we can't do. Uh, there's a mentality that we should show up in. There's a, a certain way that, that in which we show up. Um, there's things that are permissible, things that are not permissible. Um, and in similar ways, when we are showing up as in, in fasting, when we are fasting um, or in this mindset of fasting, we also have uh, certain things that we can do, certain things that we can't do. But what is the benefit of fasting? Apart from the fact that this is something that Allah has singled out and has lifted up that this is for me. All the other deeds are for him and for his benefit and for everything that is there. But uh, the fasting that is for me and that is something I will reward. Um, that every of the other acts of worship that are there, there's qu kind of quantifiable types of uh, reward or you can kind of see how much reward is being uh, given or maybe being said for certain amounts of deeds that are there, whether prayer or whether hajj or whatnot. But with respect to fasting, you know, uh, uh, Allah knows what that reward is and then the immense reward that could be there because of just the unique uh, struggle that it is because of what uh, it all entails. It's not just the uh, spiritual aspect of performing the fast, but the physical aspect. It has so many different layers to it. And to think about that fasting not only has this uh, sacredness to it, but as we're engaging in this form of worship, fasting is a shield. So when one of them, when some of you fast, when one of you fast, they should not be or do not be obscene or boisterous. That think about that fasting when you uh, put, when you start your salah, when you are in your salah, there's certain things that you will do, certain things you would not do, in a sense. But you're protected in different ways um, from from the outside world in terms of some of the negativities that are there. But thinking about when you are fasting, you're still engaging with the world. You're still going out into the world, interacting with people, doing different things. But your fasting is a shield that you are still simulating your life. You're still living your life as you may have done previously before Ramadan. But now with a sense that you might have a little less food in your stomach, but you're operating with a similar type of uh, lens. You're operating with a similar type of uh, angle and mindset that you know, I'm, I'm a little more hyper aware of the things that I do, the things that I don't do, not in a way of feeling limited, but in a sense, like you see how much more you can actually do. And think about fasting is a shield. What are those things that we were maybe getting hit by or getting distracted by or taken off of the Sirat al by uh, when we were not fasting? And think about how fasting in a, in a way is a shield for us from the vices that are in this world, but also a shield for ourselves, how, how we can sometimes become our own worst enemies, how we can sometimes uh, do things that uh, you know are unbecoming, whether being obscene or boisterous, how, how it's not necessarily just for, oh, I'm protected from the fitna that's out there, protected from all the things that are out there, but how can I, this shield be a protection for myself, uh, not just from the outside world, but a protection from the outside world for myself, uh, in a sense that the outside world is protected by anything I might do in a sense that if I'm vulgar, if I'm being harmful or whatnot, this shield is a reminder for me first and foremost. Uh, so thinking about as well that uh, when, as, as it says in the hadith, that if someone uh, insults this person or fights them, let that person who's fasting say, indeed, I am fasting, that it goes both ways, that you're protected from the harm of uh, what people are throwing you, throwing at you, the rocks that they're throwing at you. But similarly, they're protected from you acting out in a way that would be un unbecoming as well. And just thinking about the blessing that uh, we're, how, as hard as it might be, as difficult as it might be, or maybe even as easy as it might be, but you can become really complacent with and just be like, oh, this is just, we're just in a rhythm and, you know, we just get real comfortable and we start to notice the only thing that's different about us in Ramadan versus every other time of the year is that we're operating with uh, less food on our stomach, but we're still the same person in the morning and the day and in the afternoon and the evening. But thinking about that, uh, when we're staying the course with Ramadan, when we're really staying focused, we have to notice that are we are we feeling different? Are we feeling a change? And the biggest change being, are we feeling more aware of Allah? Are we feeling, and that that awareness can maybe feel hard to connect, but are we feeling more aware of the fact that uh, when we are 
more aware of uh, the words that come out of our mouth, when we are more uh, aware of where our eyes go, where we are more aware of our actions, of our hands, we're more aware of the things that we think about or the deeds that we do, all of these different things, the things that we avoid, the things that we partake in, when we are more aware of all of these different things of our surroundings and how we operate, we in turn are more aware of Allah in the sense that each of these things is by the awareness of Allah. Um, and for the awareness of Allah, that when if we we can't just be aware of Allah and then become completely ignorant of that which is around us, but when we are uh, aware of Allah, working towards this awareness of Allah, we are more aware of that which is around us, those who are around us, and especially that which is uh, with us ourselves. Um, so we are first and foremost self-aware. So as we're staying this course, we want to ask ourselves, how aware do we feel that we are? Do we feel like uh, we're at a space where we're just really struggling? Are we at a space where we're just really complacent, where we're really doing great? And how can we continue to be sustainable? How can we continue to go forward? Or are we at a space where um, we are just not uh, sure about where we've kind of been? We've just kind of been snowballing. So thinking about how we can cultivate awareness in this space, um, but also just thinking about that fasting has a twofold effect. It doesn't just have the health uh, and beneficial effects that are that are there in scientific articles that you can read on and on, but fasting is a shield. It is a spiritual shield um, for you, uh, protecting you from that which is on the outside, but also protecting the outside from the worst, which is maybe within you. Um, and thinking about that fasting shows us what we're capable of is not just within Ramadan. It's not just within a one-day setting. It's not just within uh, a, a one-off setting. It's something that we could do regularly and how we stay the course thinking about as we are running this marathon as we're walking this marathon how we can continue to keep doing it but maybe in a better way maybe we are able to pick up the pace a little bit maybe we are able to just continue on going forward maybe we are able to grab that glass of water that we've been ignoring saying no that's for the week i don't need that but being able to ask for help when we do so just thinking about inshallah as we close out uh that fasting is something that allah has lifted up as a blessed deed that uh, is not for any other purpose, any other reward, any other thing, but for the pleasure of Allah, but for the awareness of Allah. And when we are aware of Allah, we are aware of those things that are around us. We are aware of everything around us, but we are first and foremost aware of ourselves. That if we stay the course here, we want to first and foremost know not who's running what or who's going this fast or who's doing this. I'm looking at everybody else but myself. That we start with ourselves first and foremost uh, as we stay the course and uh when we do that, we look forward to then being able to make the most of this experience, inshallah. And so may Allah make this a Ramadan that continues to bless us, that continues to uh, be a time for us to reflect. May Allah make this a Ramadan that if we feel like we're losing a little bit of our faith, or we feel disconnected, we feel a little bit uh, alienated, we feel uh, struggling to remind us that there are those who are in the world, like our brothers and sisters in Gaza, like our brothers and sisters uh, across the world that are in other oppressive situations that uh, maybe, you know, we might be taking our fast for granted, but to enable us to see how uh, such a blessing it is to be able to fast, to be able to think about um, what they might be going through. And if for anything else, try and fast for the sake of uh, the that 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 uh, that gratitude that uh, where they were not able to fast or they didn't maybe live to see this Ramadan. They were not able to come to this Ramadan. They don't have the food to fast or the aspects to be able to continue to fast. How we can make our fast much more aware because we're doing it um, in, in a space that it wasn't guaranteed, it wasn't given to other people. And so making the most of the space, but also seeing that it's not just about the food, it's about uh, that transformation for us. So for us, it's not just about running as fast as we can, it's not just about um, how many miles we go or what our pace is, but it's about, about the fact that we are in the struggle and we are continuing and we keep going, we keep moving forward. Like Martin Luther King once said that, you know, if you, if you can't run, you know, walk, if you can't walk, crawl, uh, if you can't crawl, just whatever you can do, just just keep going, just keep going forward. Um, and inshallah, may, may Allah make this a blessed Ramadan for us to continue to be going forward after the first leg of this journey, two legs remain. Um, but thinking about the race does not end there, the marathon does not end there. Um, how do we change ourselves after Ramadan? How, does, how do we change who we are uh, after Ramadan? Are we back to the same people that we were before? Or are we different going forward? And that being the measure of a successful Ramadan. So when we stay the course, we think about not just where we are right here, right now. We think about where we've been, where we are now, and where do we want to go? And how do we want to continue even after this uh, particular race will end? So may Allah enable that to be the case. Uh, and may Allah keep our brothers and sisters who are suffering all around the world uh, in our prayers, um, and may uh, Allah enable us to be their liberators, uh, their upholders for justice, um, and their witnesses uh, that where they may not have been able to fast, may, they may not have been able to 
uh, be here for Ramadan. And inshallah, we have been here to be able to continue that uh, and to be able to uh, bless the world with them, inshallah. Zakwa khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Again, Ramadan Mubarak to you all.